Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. Uh, I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. That's a nice broad term for us. We're a webinar, we're a webcast, we're an online show. Um, whatever you want to call us, we are here <laughs> live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you are unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and all our recordings are available free and open to anyone on our website, which I'll show you at the end of the show where you can go and see um, everything. Um, we record the show. We add PowerPoint presentations, links to anything interesting um, that was mentioned during the show, so that'll all be available to you afterwards. Uh, we do a mixture of things here, um, book reviews, many training sessions, interviews, um, presentations, just basically anything. Um, if it's related to libraries, we'll have it on the show, or anything of use to libraries, we'll have it on the show. Um, we bring in guest speakers sometimes, um, but we also sometimes have Library Commission, Nebraska Library Commission staff uh, come on the show, and that's what we have this morning. Next to me is Holly Wolt, who is our, what is your title? Ah. Library Technology Support Specialist. She's <laughs> yes, in our computer a, team. <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, and um, she's. We are here at the Library Commission in the middle of migrating ourselves to Windows 10. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many have been done yet. Majority have been. Majority. Okay. The one we are actually broadcasting from here today, just a couple weeks ago, this computer was um, just mi um, migrated. My laptop is, but the one in my office is not. I'm still. I'm waiting for my new machine. Um, that seems to be the question for a lot of libraries. Well, sh should I or shouldn't should I, I or when should I? Right. So, um, yeah. um, so Holly's going to uh, tell you tell you when, tell you how. Um, <laughs> just some tips about you know um, what you might need to know um, if you're thinking about going to Windows 10. Um, right. Either just thinking about doing it, or you might have people asking about it. Yeah. Well, thanks, Krista. Yeah. Um, and indeed, I do have a lot of libraries have uh, been calling me, library staff, saying, what do we do here? Um, primarily because um, we've begun to, and continue to get messages if you have not updated, saying, mm -hmm. you know, it's time, it's free, let's do it. And I get that on my computer at home. Yeah, yes. and, and it uh, becomes a concern, and, um, and in some cases, um, what's about to occur is, not no longer being something that might be an optional type of an update that it's becoming a recommended and depending on your settings for your computer that could actually bring it um, to into an install moment oh, on your computer. Yes, and so that, that is something that could be challenging too for the library mm -hmm. staff. So anyway, to just get started, um, I started out, uh, well, at end of July I probably got some of my first calls from some of the smaller libraries and some are saying to me, oh, I, I just don't want to do it, and the others are saying, well, I'm ready to go. What do I need to do, and what do I need to know? So it's typical of, of the range for everything. You know, some, some are interested, some are not so interested. Mm -hmm. So to begin with, um, my, my recommendation was if, if you were an eager uh, library staff person and you were interested in, in checking it all out to consider maybe taking one computer in the library, and actually doing mm. the upgrade to Windows 10 on that one computer. I've actually had also had calls from folks who say that when the uh, patrons come into the library, they're, they're wondering why they're not using Windows 10. So they obviously are using it at home and in other places, and they, they ask the question. And so the library staff is like, well, I guess we better get started with this. Mm. So, you know, some things to, to, to know are that, um, you know, that, that it's going to happen and, and we're all going to be moving to Windows 10. So today my goal is uh, to, in this presentation, is to provide you with a recommendation of the steps to, to take to prepare for your upgrade, a little bit of information about options for your Windows 10 upgrade, and if time permits, we'll take a look and highlight some of the new features of Windows 10. Um, I'm looking at this as a presentation probably for maybe a smaller library primarily, maybe, you know, 10, 12 computers, maybe up to 20, um, and looking for ways to cut time and um, broadband usage um, when you're trying to do these upgrades. So as I, you know, stated before, the, um, it's happening, and I, I think at this point in time they say there's over 110 million um, computers that have been upgraded to wow. Windows 10. 
and the beginning of this year, as I was alluding to earlier, the, the status of the change for the update to Windows 10 for computers that are um, set up or, 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 or can through whatever you know, the, the rules are for moving and um, upgrading to Windows 10, um, those are going to become recommended updates as opposed to optional updates. Mm. And so we'll, we'll need to be thinking about that also. Oh, okay. So here are some of the considerations if you're beginning to think about this is that for some libraries um, it's important to know the amount of downtime and I, I put in here in this presentation one to two hours but each computer, I've probably done about five of these as a standalone type um, upgrade, and I've used the uh, Windows Update for some. I've used a, a USB device with a program built into it for some, and they all seem to be different. And of course, there are things that make the difference are the broadband speed, where you're located, what type of uh, processor you have in your computer, how quickly it can work, what kind of space. So. But I would at least consider offering about two hours of time to complete an upgrade. And the, your method of your upgrade can change, you know, can be either a Windows update or you can use the media creation tool to uh, build a USB device that you can simply install um, your upgrade through the USB device on your computer. And we'll address that later. And it's a very easy method to use. Um, things you want to consider also are not only how you're going to do the upgrade, but you want to be sure that when you complete this upgrade that you, 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 you're successful and that's what everybody wants. But if you're not, what do you do? Mm -hmm. um, and it's always important no matter at any time to have a pretty current backup of your computer. And in particular uh, for this upgrade, I would suggest you do an overkill and do both a data and um, do just your data um, backup to an external hard drive as well as a full system backup to uh, an external uh, hard drive. Of course, you would have to use an external hard drive because if you did it um, on the computer itself and you were not able to bring the computer back then up that back. you're going to be in trouble so right. yeah. so remember that and I guess I didn't really talk about in the, in the beginning of my position here is primarily well is focused on the public computing center computers and broadband in public libraries in Nebraska and so uh, when I'm talking about this my original entry into working with the library commission started with a grant um, about five years ago and in that grant we focused on um, what's called the LBBNC grant or the BTOP grant. We put a lot of computers, desktop and laptop computers, and peripheral devices in public libraries, mm -hmm. computing centers, uh, public computing centers. And for that reason, I, at, during this presentation, I may address a more specific subset group of, of our uh, viewers today. And in particular here, I would like to say that if you're one of the recipients of the uh, BTOP grant, you would have received also an external hard drive, which would be a great opportunity for you to use that as you're considering doing your Windows uh, 10 upgrade and you want to take a full image backup of your computer or just your files that are data files. Then the other consideration is the third-party software that is on your computer prior to the upgrade. And my recommendation would be to, um, if you have any of that type of software, is to go visit the website for the software. Surely they're addressing Windows 10 issues or um, contact if you have some type of a, um, ability to contact support, technical support, contact them to find out what it is you need to do. And the biggest point here today is that as of now, because we know, you know, we have to do a wink with this, things change all the time with uh, Windows 10, what we hear and what we read. But as of now, um, you are offered a free upgrade if your computer um, meets the specifications or qualifications until 
up until July 29, 2016. Right, through the so, summer. Yeah. yeah, through the summer. So it's important that you um, put that uh, red letter date on your calendar and know that and looking at the considerations, you may want to at least, if you're a tail end kind of person to get that done, that you're looking at least a month ahead of time starting to uh, figure out if you're, you know, what you need to do to get your upgrade done in time. Give yourself enough time yeah. just to, you know, for the free version. Right. right. And um, then the other piece of this is that you uh, want to make sure that your computer's hardware and um, storage support Windows 10. and if you're getting those annoying messages that come across periodically, more than likely you are um, okay with that. But um, if you're not, but you're still interested in do moving to Windows 10, um, then you certainly should go ahead and take a look and see what, what specifications are required. Oops, I'm on my, I'm not used to this mouse. Let me see where am I? You can oh. just use the arrows on okay. the keyboard now yeah. if you want. Yeah, okay. No, that's on there. Yeah. So, in talking about that, I've just highlighted some basic, the basic specifications that are required in the number one here to let you know uh, if you, you know, you can take a look at your computer and see if you meet those specifications. Um, and the one thing to think about too is if you're, if you are going to do the upgrade and you don't make that date, you do have some pricing there of 119 for the home version for um, this uh, for Windows 10, and then the Pro version is 199 dollars. So that could be a significant savings for your library mm -hmm. if you would make sure to meet that calendar date. Um, and the with the upgrade, you're going to be retaining all your settings, applications, and data on your computer. So this isn't like a recovery build starting fresh all over. Mm -hmm. You're going to be on a Windows 10 machine, but you'll still be maintaining any of the, the data applications and the settings that you had as long as in, I have to have the asterisk there because in some cases, the application may have a, a different version that runs on 10, so you might have something slightly different. So, we discovered that with this computer upgrading to um, it's a new, different version of PowerPoint, mm -hmm. and the webcam software we use, Yawcam, we had a new version of that because of upgrading. Yeah, that's a per yeah. perfect example of that. And it, and uh, I would ask you a question. Obviously, when the well, you didn't do the upgrade, but yeah. you know. Um, later we'll reference this. Um, what's great about the feature of doing the install for Windows 10 is it actually goes out and it finds, it'll find things that aren't going to be compatible wow. and it has you uninstall them, which I think is really nice um, and makes it a lot easier than you having to figure out, you know, why isn't working, why isn't it working. So, so here we have um, some ideas for your backup and recovery. Um, options to consider when preparing for your Windows 10 upgrade. Um, you can, you could if you want to um, just use a recovery media if you, um, but my suggestion here is that hands down is to make sure that you use a full system image backup and um, in this case also with the Windows 10 upgrade they offer this feature and it's for 31 days. If you upgrade to Windows 10 on your machine, you, if you're, for some reason, you want to, what they call, roll back mm -hmm. to a previous version. In this case, it would be Windows 7 or Windows 8.1 because that's the use of the upgrade. You need to be at those two versions to even consider doing an upgrade. Um, then you can roll back to your previous version. Now you won't; in, it won't include the newly updated software if you've done anything in Windows 10. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a pretty neat feature. Um, I have not used it um, in some of the material that I've read in preparation for this webinar. They say it doesn't always work, so I wouldn't rely on it solely. You might find it an easier method to, um, you know, just to to do a recovery if you have a problem. Then than using the system image backup and doing a restore from it. But I think the fail safe would be to have multiple methods to manage that. So again, here we're talking one to three hours for your upgrade. And one thing to mention here is that 
you will need to uninstall the non-compatible third-party software. In particular, here I'd like to mention that I'm, I'm aware that uh, SmartShield, which was put on a lot of our uh, mm. grant computers as the, the hard drive protection software, um, will not work. The current one that you have installed on your Windows 7 machines, all the machines are Windows 7, will not work with Windows 10. And so the, the instructions are to use the remove tool from uh, that's offered from their website and then do your upgrade and then reinstall the um, product Smart Shield. Now, the information that I just gave you could be gobbledygook for some, <laughs> even those who know Smart Shield, but you need to remember that if you have a maintenance contract with um, Centurion Technologies, that you can access a portion of the website to find these specific programs, and I'd be happy to help you if you are unable to do that. And then the other piece of information is you probably will have to remove any of your antivirus and malware software uh, when you do this upgrade. And in particular, again, for our grant computers, we have a number of libraries that received ADA software on their Windows 7 machine. And um, my experience doing the upgrade on those machines is that none of the software is compatible and will all need to be removed. And uh, <clears throat> you can, there's no um, reinstall for free with that software. So mm -hmm. you would be buying new software. And, um, and that might be a good time for you to evaluate what, what you want to do with your ADA machine. Um, maybe just select one software to offer with that um, as opposed to the four that came with the grant. It was a lot of opportunities to explore different types of um, ADA software, um, assistive technology software at that time. But there's new stuff that's come out, and as I've been... Oh, yeah, it's been a few years. Yeah. yeah, so I think that I would encourage you to look to see what else what else is available, too. And see which of all those software products was used most in your library. Mm -hmm. Like you said, we had certain ones that we put on everybody's, but they might not all be something that mm -hmm. your, your people are using. Yeah. Right. And so then the other piece of information is that the, the drivers, say, for your keyboards, mice, monitors, etc., Sometimes they can present a problem with the upgrade for Windows 10, so you want to be sure that you investigate that and and make sure that you have those installed on your computer um, prior to your upgrade. And um, after you've completed the upgrade, or I guess you could do that afterwards too, but after you've completed the upgrade, obviously then you're going to be installing third-party software again, yeah, probably a new version or some, some change to it that makes it... Uh, um, compatible with Windows 10. And the other piece of information, I, and I alluded to, to it earlier, but I would still say this is a, a, a good recommendation. Um, as you get ready to do this, I, I would focus on just one computer in your library and and do some detailed note taking so that you know what you've done. And um, I'm not saying you'll be completely successful the first time. We know it's technology that you're working with after all, but <laughs> but in general, I would say that it's it's better just to, to not go in there and, and try to do three or four computers at the same time. And what, one odd thing I will say uh, from my experience is when I've done these upgrades and it's, ironic, but I've talked to other people too, it almost seems like the, 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 um, the feedback you get as your upgrade's going on is not consistent. I mean, it, you're getting the upgrade done, but it almost feels like sometimes the text is different that comes up at various times, and I have no idea. But um, Or you can have um, something work on one computer that's an identical model, and, it, and it, it won't work the same way. It'll work through it, but it will be different on, an, on another computer. So I think that that's um, something to to feel comfortable about if that were to happen. Um, but do take good notes and understand what you've done in order to prepare your computer for the upgrade. So the, the biggest question to me is, um, you know, what what will work best for you to um, to complete your upgrade? Did I actually do this? Um, yeah. 
you know, how, how, what works best in your library. For some libraries, um, they might want to use the Windows Update feature to do the download. And say you're a small library and you have four or five computers, I certainly could see that would be a methodology to use. Uh, you have to understand, you know, you may be using quite a bit of broadband speed. And I think the, d the download can take, you know, well, again, depending on um, your broadband speed um, and usage in the library at that point in time can take, you know, half an hour or more for some of the small rural libraries. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that um, is offered is this um, method, method of using the, uh, a, DVD, uh, a USB device and installing the upgrade, um, it's called an ISO on image on the USB device and then simply you, down, you would be building it once uh, using the program the, uh, that is used to create it and then you would be able to use that USB device as you move through all your computers in your computing nice. center. So that would be a nice method to use. And let's see. How big of a USB device you need to have to it's do that? It's an 8 yeah. meg. That's okay. a good question, yeah. And it should have nothing else on it. Thank you. Um, so the I'm just flipping over here to show you this. It's called a media creation um, tool that you use to build this. And um, it, this is a website to that particular um, spot that you can go to use it. And it talks a little bit about um, the you know, what you need to do to, to create this and what kind of selection you need to make. One thing we didn't talk about is you could have a 64-bit, I mean, in the in the specs, we talked a little bit about you would have a 64 or a 32-bit processor. And if you go to the site and you're going to make a selection, you want to be sure to, to know what your computer has. So you'll need to go into the property settings of your computer and see wh what type of computer you actually have. But um, it's basically, it took me about 15, 20 minutes to complete uh, using this um, media cre uh, creation tool to build my USB um, install device and it was pretty slick and, and very straightforward so I would encourage you even if perhaps you are thinking you're going to do the uh, download your Windows updates to do your upgrade you might just want to try it to see how it works um, the upgrade one note is to make is that you can use this on Windows 7 and 8.1 which are the upgradable computers to Windows 10 but I actually did one on a Windows 10 computer that I'd already upgraded. I built, uh, used the media um, build tool, and I built a USB device. But the caution is, if you're in that 31-day period and you're using the media creation tool on a computer that is it still in that 31-day period, you can't necessarily roll back. I think there's something to do with the temporary files get used, so it won't work. For you to do a rollback at that point, but I was already beyond that with my computer, so it didn't really matter. So let me give me a moment to catch up here. So one thing that you can see here is that if you are using that USB device, you might have a lot more control over when and how you do the upgrades and for the software. And um, you also might want to think about this. I've had um, folks call in, the library staffs call in and say, well, nobody's really asking me to go move to upgrade to Windows 10 yet. But as I've said, also sometimes, if, especially traveling people, they'll come into the library to use the library and they'll be like, well, don't you have a Windows 10 machine around here? So for a while, you might want to think about having a mix of, you know, sevens mm -hmm. and tens. And the other consideration is if you were listening and you're one of the VTOP libraries with the ADA workstation when I was talking earlier about that software not working, you, you may consider upgrading to Windows 10 all your machines besides your ADA workstation mm -hmm. and, like, leave it till the, the last 
being the last one that you upgrade and during that time spend some time figuring out what you're going to do um, you know if you're going to purchase new software to continue to make that an assistive technology um, computer or if you're going to um, fold that in with all your other public computers um, so you, again it's it's what works best for you and your library yeah, and look for other software products that may also not be I mean this is just one that we know about from our computer our mm -hmm. libraries mm -hmm. there may be other things in your library that are not compatible yet with Windows 10 that your your patrons do need mm -hmm. using regularly and you're gonna have to figure out can we upgrade everything do we still have to keep these old computers mm -hmm. because otherwise our our users can't do what they need to right you and know? you may not have the budget to replace that, you know, even if it is available in Windows 10, you, you might not have the budget in the library to do that. And the Windows 7 machine, you know, will continue to work, um, you know, for you. So just, again, so I, I kind of went with the idea to just to show you how to use that media creation tool um, to, to do your upgrade process. And these next four or five slides, or more for just discussion, what I did um, across the weekend is I, I uh, created the, the USB device to do the upgrade um, at work, and then I took it home and I uh, got on my Dell um, Windows um, 7 Pro machine and took some uh, pictures with my phone mm -hmm. <laughs> of the upgrade. But there's some things, um, if you're somebody who's just a little tentative about doing something like this, you know, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Now, if, if you've gone through the recommendations, you're probably in pretty good shape because you know you've got that full system image backup. But, mm -hmm. you know, let's say you don't have that or, you know, something happened, you're just, or maybe you're just a little timid about um, taking this type of a step and, and worried uh, that you, what, what's going to happen? I tried to think about these next four or five slides as giving you some information on, on what you should expect to see. So um, the image here is basically the directory that's built from the, the media creation tool. And to start off, to do the upgrade, you want to, um, again, I, I would assume that you, you wouldn't be thinking to unprotect the machine if you were using SmartShield or some other uh, type of hard drive protection. But if you are or if you're using Deep Freeze, you'll need to contact them and find out what you need. But definitely uh, all protection has to be off on the machine to start with. And you need to be logged on as the administrator, which makes sense. Um, the file, uh, the execution file there is pointed to with the red arrow. And then I just double clicked on that to get myself started. And in particular here, I'm just showing you some examples of some of the screens that you see as you go through the process. But in the bottom left corner there, I wanted to visit a little bit about this because it wants to have your, your uh, product key information. And oftentimes what I found out, especially for you libraries that are the BTOP libraries with your computers, those computers were imaged and the, the product key does not seem to be the make a difference. Um, it doesn't say that it matches. And so don't freak out about that. Just know um, in this particular um, uh, question, uh, as you're moving through the installation, you can just click on next and then it figures out on its own that, yeah, this, this, is, this is an okay computer for me to do an upgrade on. And then it um, asks the question, um, what version you want to install and if you're going to be installing uh, upgrading to um, the pro version or the home version of Windows 10. So again these are just some of the slides you see as you're working through it and you can see that they're typical for any type of install so it's it's nothing to be too panicked about. And in the case of the top left slide Basically, I'm saying I just I want to put everything in there and keep everything that I have in, on the computer, and I think that's important also to do, because your 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 idea for doing the upgrade is that you are not going to be losing anything that you have on the computer that you are forced to remove because it um, it can't run on Windows 10, and again, there's just these messages along the way, getting started, working on something. You just need to be patient. Um, and, and let the process uh, work through. And again, remember what I said before, all the slides are not necessarily um, the same 
you know, and I think, you know, the ones that are asking you specific questions, yes, but, you know, if it's sitting there and it's got a blank screen or if it's got the little rotation going and saying it's working on upgrading or working on for information, just be patient with that. And when I was working on this on the weekend, I didn't even follow my own best information because it, <laughs> you can see on the top left corner of the um, well, the pictures, yeah, <laughs> I I didn't even, I I guess, I, I mean, I just was home and I thought, well, I'm going to go ahead and take this. And I was more uh, engaged in trying to get pictures uh, mm -hmm. than I was in preparing myself. And so it, it did a gotcha. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what's going to happen is it's going it, to, Windows is going to find, you know, when it's in the process of the upgrade, things that aren't, um, aren't able to be um, upgraded and have you uninstall them. So I went ahead and I clicked uninstall and it uninstalled um, and then it restarted the computer said you want to restart it? I said yeah and so the next um, the next slide that's in the center on the top or next slide the next image was it came about it because and this is where I think somebody who might not be as experienced or maybe um, want to take a step and, and, and try something, um, I had to actually uh, restart my program as I did earlier and, and hit the setup exec and then start it again. And then, so then it prompted me right away with this question, you know, do you want to continue on or do you want to start over again? And I didn't think that was too clear, so I wanted to make that clear to you. And I will also say from my experience um, of working with this, I've tried to, you know, follow the recommendations that I've given, but then I've gone ahead and done an upgrade and not just to see what happens. And I would tell you that for me, that with the ADA computers that I was working with and doing the upgrade, every time it came across one of the the uh, softwares that were installed that are for the system technology, say Zoom Text um, or JAWS, it came up and did the same thing to me and said, you know, can't. Oh, can't use it. You're going to have to uninstall it. So just be familiar, you know, familiar and know that that's the case. And then you can see that it finally says after all this work, and there, um, you know, that's probably in time-wise is about an hour, an hour and a half. Finally says, hey, I'm ready to do the install and the or the upgrade. And you can see then that from the two percent to eighty-three percent was about forty-five minutes for me sitting at my computer. So wow. so it took some time. Now I'm I'm on a, I was at home and, and I'm live out in the country so my I don't have a fast speed for broadband. I guess it wouldn't even matter at that point because it's all on the computer. But anyway it took some time for it to complete that. Um, and one thing I wanted to mention also in the process of doing the upgrade, you will you'll be asked if you want to include uh, at the very beginning, you're going to be asked, do I want to do updates also for my computer? Hmm. And that's something to consider if you're thinking about your time because all those updates are going to add to the time for doing the upgrade. Um, I guess I would recommend that you consider just waiting on the updates and getting the actual One thing at a time. Uh, yeah, well, the computer yeah. upgraded and then come back and do the updates for your new Windows 10 machine um, at a later time. So that would definitely be my recommendation. So once the process is done and it says it's completed, I, I added some, you know, some features to this one. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. It's like and there was a series of, of uh, uh, windows on the computer that were saying you're done you did great you know it's kind of like <laughs> it's like oh wow got a lot of positive my, reinforcement my, yeah, this is a good thing off, sweat <laughs> off my, my, my hands and my brow but uh, then it also begins to tell you a little bit about the, the features that are available with Windows 10 that are that are new but um, so at this point now we've talked about well what do I need to do to prepare and now we've actually done an upgrade. So you would take that same USB device and you know put it in the next computer, or you could uh, you know I I would take make 
a couple of them, two or three, and you could do a couple at a time, you know, mm -hmm. in the library, if, especially if you're up to 20 or so computers that you would want to, you know, you don't want to be doing one at a time. But that is the nice because you're not um, having to wait for all those downloads to of time for the, um, the upgrade um, updates. So here we are, and uh, we have things to think about related to the new features and, ex and explore the, and then, and then the software inventory review is just a little bit of a co conversation I wanted to have. Um, so you need to think a little bit about in this customization. I'm looking at the public. Um, uh, computers in the library, what do your customers need to see? Um, one thing that they do offer is uh, with Windows 10 upgrade is a Windows um, store and you may or may not want to have that feature. And then the, the Cortana, which is the basically uh, your assistant on the computer, um, you know, can talk to you and tell jokes and, and the more you use her, she, or the more, is there a way to make her a man? I didn't even know. I don't know. I don't know. To change the <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I don't use that feature. But anyway, um, I've had some libraries. I was surprised. I thought that that would be something they want to just kind of say no to. But they're like, no, oh, we kind of like having that feature available for our users to use. So it's a personal assistant, and it'll answer questions for you. You'll go out to the web and find out information and, and tell you. And you can have it either as a mic or you can type in your question question into the search bar. But that's something that you can turn on and off on the computer. Um, you don't have to have it available. And um, let's see, the other thing I was going to do was just kind of go and open up the, the um, desktop menu and just talk a little bit about this. I'm sure you may have seen this if you don't have a Windows 10 machine. but Basically, all of this information over here, they, they call tiles. And you can customize. Um, it comes with the default setting with some tiles allocated, and mostly for the store or any kind of news feed information, your weather, local weather, that type of a thing. But you can uh, customize this by the size of the tile. Um, you see here we have a grouping of what these tiles are all associated with Microsoft Office. And then there's the, the weather and the news tiles. And if you don't want to have that feed for the news to be um, live, you can, you can stop it so it's not feeding live to the, uh, to the computer. And then down here, we have a choice of some of the browsers. Uh, the one new feature with um, Windows 10 is the, uh, the Microsoft Edge browser, yeah, right. and they're really trying to take the, uh, the, the, they really are looking to close out the use of, of the Internet Explorer. I know they're really pushing that whenever I've used like one of our new laptops or something that hasn't been really used a lot by anyone else, it keeps popping up with, let's show you how, let us show you how to use Edge, your new browser is right here. And, I just keep minimizing those little notices. Yeah, <laughs> there, it, Edge is coming along, but I my mm. recommendation would still be, you know, I think you can explore it, but I think it's it's going to have some major changes to it. There's a lot of things that are missing from it that yeah. you can find in other browsers. But it is obvious that they're positioning um, the Microsoft Edge to be their, their new browser to use. Um, so anyway, so you can set up, um, you could do a, a right click in here and you can pin, which would mean that you would take this and it would become a tile to your desktop so it's easily accessible. And I could see how this could be an advantage in the public um, computing center, somebody mm -hmm. coming in. They don't have to search for things. Things most commonly used. Yeah. yeah. And this, but this one thing I do like about this is like the, the search, um, the, the search field is really um, enhanced and you have the ability, I mean, you could get to all this before in the search, but here it's it's done for you at one time. You can see you have your, your best match, and then you have um, items that are, you know, information that's on the web, and then they have the store, and if um, there were a 
file or something on here that had related to Adobe, if there was a PDF file that I had used recently, it would show up in this list. So it makes it kind of an easy way to, to find information for you. It's more right at your fingertip. So that's something to think about. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was with Windows 10, if you're looking to have a, an antivirus um, uh, you know, if, you, if you've got a uh, third-party antivirus uh, software, you, uh, Windows 10 comes pre-installed with Windows Defender, which is antivirus and malware protection. And all of the computers that uh, were distributed with the grant for LBBNC uh, had that installed on them. And uh, basically, it was uh, the previous version of it for Windows 7 was installed. And I don't really know, maybe somebody can send me a message here to say that if, you know, if they had any issue with it, they may have had a preference for something else and installed mm. it. But know that that is, comes pre-installed on there. And maybe at that point in time is another time to evaluate whether you want to go with what you have been using or if the product for a Microsoft product will work for you. One nice thing about that is the actual maintenance um, of and the updates related to antivirus protection um, and security would become packaged with the maintenance for Windows 10 and it wouldn't be something separate that you had to do. Mm -hmm. So that would be an advantage for you. Oops. And another new feature we'll quote unquote call it a feature for Windows 10 is how the maintenance is delivered. Um, it's basically been defined for Windows 10 as a service, which means it's downloaded, you know, when it's available, it's downloaded to your machine. And there are specific settings that you'll want to consider updating, I think, with this right away. Um, and I've had some folks contact me about it already that they're kind of like, this is just really annoying. But the, the Windows update um, has the ability to automatically, it, it, it programs and figures out when you're most active on your computer so it doesn't try to do a update restart oh, for nice. maintenance. But some people don't want their computer turned on in the middle of the night or mm -hmm. they still want to have some control over it. So you can you can notif you know you can be notified about when there be a start or you can set up the time to do a start, um, but in general you don't as you did in Windows 7 and um, do a um, download updates you know go out and look for updates and download it it manages all that on its own and you could include again this is what I was saying about Windows Defender if you wanted to. This would be an easy way to work with that to have your um, your updates for antivirus uh, managed by um, by the Windows 10 maintenance. And then they have a couple of things in here, and I haven't really worked with this, but one thing I I think is interesting is um, updates for one place. So if you were in your at home, or if you were in a library and you had three or four computers. Um, there's an ability if they're connected that you can have the update um, brought down to one computer and then move through to the other computers that are that um, are this you know in need of the same types of updates at um, at one time and I guess that's the feature is to, to make it happen more quickly and then also that you're not using the downloading multiple times it's just going through your network and being delivered to the different computers so I'm uh, I I don't know personally I I think I'd rather set that off I wouldn't want that kind of interaction <laughs> but mm -hmm. but it, it is it's an option and a feature that they think this should happen and then when the um, the 11.15 or the 15, I can't remember if it's 15.11 or 11.15, the, the big November update for mm -hmm. Windows 10 occurred. Um, it's the kind of a thing that you want to be sure that you will have some control over when it is actually installed on your computer. And you can imagine in an enterprise system, 
you know, a business or somewhere, you don't want to have something automatically occur that uh, could impact your computers and say if it, because Windows, um, they're, they're pushing that maintenance all the time. They want it. They want you to, to put it on there as quickly as possible. Well, maybe you're just not so sure you're ready for it or you want to give it a month or two. So you can also select in that third slide, you can select to defer those types of large updates until a later time and then you can control it. But in general, you have less control over your updates with Windows 10 than you did with previous versions. But I would encourage you um, because mine is managed here at the office and I just now have a Windows 10 machine at home, I haven't really paid much attention to it. Um, and so, uh, but I think this is something that you'll want to spend some time on once you get your upgrade done so you can coordinate how the, all the computers in your uh, library are being updated for in your public computing area. And also just, I'm, I know that Centurion Technology Smart Shield, they will they have uh, the ability to take control and manage this also. So you'll want to, if you're using Smart Shield, you'll want to spend a little bit of time to understand how this Windows 10 maintenance translates into the new uh, Smart Shield for Windows 10. Okay, getting down there. So at this point, this I'm hopeful this was at least helpful to get you to start to think about some things that you may not have thought uh, about before and that you have a feeling for the upgrade, that it's um, something that um, you, you may be able to do yourself. I'm sure some libraries have IT staff that will manage it that's, uh, in the library, and then you have some of the libraries that may hire somebody from the outside. But I think it's important that somebody in the library understand how it's done and, and is at least a part of the process. And certainly, I think it's very doable um, to, to complete. One of the things I wanted to mention to you is uh, to assist public libraries trying to get this upgrade done, the Library Commission is going to be offering a Moodle continuing education course, two of them, and each is going to be one week long, and it relates to um, the first one or the first in the set. You don't have to take both. Would be on doing the upgrade, okay. Windows 10 upgrade, and it would require you to designate a computer in your library or at home that you're going to use for that week to uh, by the end of it to be able to complete the upgrade. And so it'll be a little more in depth. This was a very much just an overview. It's really difficult to figure out exactly what to say <laughs> and how deep to go with this conversation. Sure. But but that um, the upgrade will be one week, and then I actually I think that's pretty straightforward in all honesty. But the mm -hmm. customization of your Windows uh, 10 mach upgraded machine is the second week, and I think mm -hmm. that will that will cover not you know some of the customization, but that we just talked about, but I will go much more into depth into your computer as far as you know how to manage your maintenance, um, um, any other types of things that you think that you want to have in that public computing center that will help your patrons be able to use the technology in the library and with Windows 10 um, machines. So. Is that something that people, Nebraska people, can sign up for now? That's a good. That would be that the next. No? no. Well, it's <laughs> it's not um, it's not available to sign up for for registration. Okay. Uh, the plan is that we'll offer it um, at, right now. I have three sessions kind of set up. One would be the the last week of February and the first week of March, and that would be the first would be the upgrade. The second would be the um, the actual um, customization and the same thing from March, April, and April, May. So it would be the last week of the, the, the month, month and then the first of the other. And I'm going to have that registration information um, available the first week in February. I'm going to okay. be out of town here. That. Yeah. And what I'll do is I'll send it to uh, the announcement about that and, and more information about the class. 
it will be worth two uh, continuing education mm -hmm. credits. So that's the other thing. And I and I would encourage you to do that, but just because it just would be helpful for you to understand. You may even find it helpful for you to help patrons who come in mm -hmm. and they want to find out some more information about how to, to upgrade to Windows 10. So I could see it be an advantage even if you have somebody else managing that in your library, at least you would be knowledgeable. Or if they come in and they want to want to do a customization feature. But so that information will be coming out the first week of February. I will send uh, the information to all public libraries in Nebraska and then specifically I'll send an email to who's ever registered for this class who's a Nebraska library right. staff. So this for those of you that are not because I know we do have a lot of people here today who are not local this would be for Nebraska libraries exactly. to take their class but look in your area for something there might be something being right. as well from your state library or something else that um, can help you get going with it. And then the other piece of information is I hesitated to put any kind of resource information out because with this um, presentation because it is really pretty general and I think you could search and find most of this but um, when I complete the setup of, and start offering the classes I will have a, I, a really good resource list I've been building on it that I would make available and again send to you all all of you who have attended the class today or are on the, mm -hmm. the list for registration. Cool. Well, I think that is about it for me okay. today. All right. Um, we do have some questions that came through. Um, let's see. All right. Um, and the first one, I'm not sure if you know the answer, but I looked up because I was able to. Someone wanted to know, do you happen to know how long there will be updates for Windows 7? Oh, um, yeah. Will it be going away? Um, and you can, I don't know exactly, but if you, so if you right. found the information. Yeah, I, I did look up to see about Windows 7. Um, Microsoft stopped selling sub-retail sales of that in 2014, and they stopped mainstream support actually um, this, wow, just a couple of days ago, uh, January 13th, <laughs> 2015. Um, but they're going to switch to what they call extended support, which means um, you'll still get... Um, uh, security patches, the critical security patches, you'll still get those kind of things, and that's going to be through um, 2020, according to this. Um, so you'll have some support for it, but um, it won't be updated. There won't be major, major fixes to it. May, there'll be updates to the Microsoft to Windows 7, but there will be security updates and critical things like that just to keep it working. Yeah, it won't be like um, a service pack kind of updates or anything. For right. Them. So, um, and that will be through, they've said the extended support goes through January 14th, 2020. So you do have some time if you still do um, need to do that. And actually, the, that's for just the um, home version. The professional, um, Windows 7 professional, they're still actually selling that. It's just the... Um, uh, the regular, the home version, um, home basic, home premium, they stopped selling selling that at all um, last fall in October 2014. Mm -hmm. So um, it depends on what you're using. If you're using professional, that's still kind of cruising along. Right, it, yeah. It's just the home version. So it depends on what right. you put into your library. And I know some libraries will use one or the other. Um, Most so, of them have the professional. Yeah. So it's going to be around for a bit. Um, and then the one thing but, to mention about that, because that's a good point, Krista, is that this Windows 10, Basically, what Microsoft is saying is that's it. You know, this is this is mm -hmm. this is where we're at, and you know, you don't have to pay for um, you know uh, the upgrade or anything like that. It just keeps building off of this platform. Mm -hmm. Now, that's what they say, and I don't mean to be facetious, but this week, you know, I mean, we <laughs> oh, know that they they can changes. certainly change things. And one other thing I didn't mention, and would be probably part of the resources and talking about customization is. You know, it may be a good time also to be thinking about, um, if in particular, the 2010 version of Microsoft Office Suites came with the, the grant computers. You know, we're up to 2016 and, mm -hmm. uh, and also the, yeah. the Windows 365, uh, which is a subscription um, in the cloud uh, Microsoft Suites option. The, this might be a really good time to be thinking about, you know, do you want to upgrade that as well? Yeah. Um, look at everything you've got. Yeah, to see. look at it all and see what what will works best again in your library, and maybe it's just fine to stay with what you have there. But I think that in general, 
eventually it will catch you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, eventually, just like everything, all the other. But again, versions then you have to weigh everything. that with the fact that do you have the fi the finances to 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 do that, and right. do you have the expertise? Yeah, there's a lot so. of things to take into consideration with this. The fact that Windows 10 is free through this summer. Mm -hmm. After that, you're gonna have to pay. So can you just put that into your budget? Or you need to get on it now. Does any other software on your computers work with it or not? I mean, there's a lot of research to mm -hmm. be done. It's not just, yeah, I'll upgrade and figure it out later. You do mm -hmm. need to look at all these right. things beforehand. Right. Um, that's what someone did also ask, give an example of what would be third-party software. I think that's what you're talking about with some of the... Um, um, yeah, that would be, in this case, well, non-Microsoft non software, but... Uh, not Microsoft, yeah. Yeah, I would say that... Um, I was talking about the hard drive protection for the public computing areas. You know, we mm -hmm. have a couple of them were offered with a grant. That would be a Centurion Technology Smart Shield. It, but it mm -hmm. could be some type of um, any a different kind of application. Anything, yeah. anything really, yeah. as long as it's I not mean, Microsoft. We had to look at that for like for what we're talking about here. The, the, our webcam view you see here, we use something called YawCam. Um, yet another webcam software, and it's just free online um, webcam software, and we had to make sure that worked with it. Mm -hmm. um, Go to webinar, which is the software we use to run this, this right. um, show. Um, that's third party that we had to look into to make sure are they going to work with the new Windows 10 or not? And luckily it does. <laughs> so anything that you might have critical in your library for um, right, yeah. so yeah, you want to make sure that way ahead of time that you've tested. Tested to make sure that it's or check with them and find out. And that someone did ask about: Will Defender be active after the download, or will it need to be turned back on? I think will it's. Need to be I think it's. I think it's. Um, does that one work? The Windows Defender is mm -hmm. comes new with the upgrade, so okay. so it and it's on. So it's automatically yeah. on right mm -hmm. when you do it. Okay. Um, someone else did say also. I found that on Dell PCs, if you download the Dell Command Updater. Um, specifically version 2.1, it helps before doing the Windows updates. The Dell has its own built-in updating oh, thing for its okay. computers. So if you got some Dells, look for their own command updater. Um, and someone else says um, they installed Windows 10 on one machine and it immediately let a mal malware through. Um, hmm. I'm not sure what. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <coughs> that could be things weren't set up correctly. Maybe, you know, you need Maybe it, extra. yeah, yeah. I, I have no idea. I mean, every every case is different, and I'm um, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, check your settings. Uh, see what it did. Um, and that's the well, one thing with with, with, with any the, security. There's new stuff coming out all the time, right. and there's always going to be somebody new created some sort of malware, some sort of program, and the um, security software hasn't caught up yet mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. So you might have fallen into there. You never um, um, no. Um, okay, now we have one other question, and I think we'll have this be our last one. It's a little after 11 o'clock. Now we do want to wrap up mm -hmm. mostly on time. Um, uh, in order to take advantage of the Microsoft Store apps, will we have to give each network user login, both staff and public, a Microsoft account? I can't answer that question because I haven't used that store. I haven't yeah. used that app, but um, I think it, I, I'm sure that they're more than willing to help you understand as you do some searching. Yeah, we haven't investigated we, that. It's yet, removed so. from uh, work here. We don't have right. access yeah, to it. Right, yeah, we don't have access. Yeah. I mean, they wouldn't want us to, I'm sure, just start going <laughs> crazy. <and laughs> so, uh, that, yeah, so I'm sorry, yeah. you can't answer that question. It's been it's been somewhat overwhelming for me just to to get to know Windows 10 and and try to understand everything that's going on and how to do a setup and be thinking about uh, what kinds of uh, things to include in the mm -hmm. class. All right. So it doesn't look like there's any other urgent questions coming in right now, um, but you can contact Holly here at the Library Commission if you have any questions. Um, check out other things online. Um, there's, you know, if you just look for Windows 10, there's uh, lots of resources out there. For and uh, well, the only thing I would suggest well. you do if you're out there doing that is make sure when you're doing a search that you put some date parameters on that because True. things have changed. You know, it, yeah. it, it. I was uh, working through the setting up this webinar, I kept wanting to make sure I had 
stuff from if, if at all in the last three months was right, a good idea yeah. and I know when you do look up you were talking about November that was the last big it looks like when you do look up things about it November was a big yeah that uh, was a big, big change yeah of things of how things are going to be coming so um, and, the, and so yeah. that would be you could equate that with being like a service pack previously mm -hmm. uh, for previous versions of uh, um, Windows but they just give it a number now basically well it was the it was the date, November yeah, 15th, 11th, 15th. Yeah. yeah. So. so that's how they're going to designate them all now. Is Evidently. They, <laughs> the date they came out. So. Well, anyway, uh, thanks yeah. for having me. And yes, hopefully I, this will get to encourage the libraries to, you know, start thinking about moving to, mm -hmm. you know, Windows 10. Yeah. So. And also, I mean, we talked specifically about libraries, but for what you want to do at home. This is actually how I do it here. Whenever we've had upgrades to new versions of Windows, I let work do it first. And then see how mm -hmm. we learn learn I learn about it here and learn how it works because everything I just saw the desktop it looks totally different and mm -hmm. you got to get used to where things are. Mm -hmm. um, the first couple of weeks, last couple of weeks of doing the show, it took us a little longer to get set up and going because we had to figure, <laughs> figure out where did everything move. All to. the settings <laughs> moved to. They've got a new header, yes. or a new name, and yes. a so, new new hidden place for them. That's what uh -huh. they do. <laughs> so got used to it here, and then like after a few weeks after I do it here maybe longer a few months sometimes if I'm not as jumping on it quickly to upgrade it at mm -hmm. home too and get that going yeah all right well thank you very much Holly thank you everyone for attending as um, I said the show has been recorded and will be available on our um, encompass live website which I'll show you here now Do -do -do. Um. <sighs> If you just Google our show, you'll see we're the first result on, well, here it went to Bing, but whatever. Um, so the show has been recorded. It will be available here on our website. If you scroll down right beneath our upcoming sessions, we have a link to our archived Encompass Live sessions. And that's where we'll put the recording, um, the PowerPoint that uh, Holly put together, um, I'll put a link to the Windows page you had up there so you can get access to that. Um, that all will be available here um, probably by this afternoon, um, as long as everything processes um, fast enough and quickly enough. I'll, let you, I'll email everyone who is here to let you know when the recording is available. Um, so that will wrap it up for today. I hope you join us next week when our topic is One Book, One School, One Community. Um, experiences within all school reads. Um, many towns or states, we have here in Nebraska both a state one, we have an Omaha and a Lincoln, one book, one whatever, <laughs> one book, one Nebraska, one book, one Lincoln. Um, this is about one of our middle schools here in Lincoln did a school-based one of those where all of the students read the same title. And um, April Jorgensen, who is from right here in Lincoln, is going to be with us next Wednesday to tell us how they pulled that off at the school level. Um, so definitely join us for that and sign up for any of our other shows coming up here. You can see them on the list. As we get new ones added to the schedule, they will be added here too. So you always see new topics coming up. Um, also, if you are a big Facebook user, we are also Encompass Live is on Facebook. We have a page here. If you um, like our page on Facebook, you'll get notifications here. I do a reminder about logging in today's show. When the recording is available, I post up on here, so you'll get a notification of that too. So if you are big on Facebook, please do go ahead and like us over there. Other than that, that wraps it up for today. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next week on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.